Triage can save lives. You see, it's a simple process that happens everywhere around the world as patients walk into any emergency center. Like a 42-year-old gentleman that walks into a rural clinic in South Africa where I used to work. He comes in with chest pain. He's anxious and scared, and the emergency room is busy. But he would still have to undergo a system of triage, which means asking a standard set of questions, doing his vital signs, adding it to a mathematical score, and then, if needed, doing an essential investigation, like an ECG or electrocardiogram. Afterwards, he would get a final color, red, indicating critically ill, or green, maybe not so bad. The problem is that we are getting triage wrong in the developing world. Maybe because we have limited resources. Sometimes we have two nurses and one doctor looking after hundreds of patients. Sometimes we fail to ask the standard set of questions for every single patient. Sometimes we make mistakes with a mathematical score because we're tired, because we're human. Sometimes we forget to do the essential tasks like an ECG. I'm a South African emergency medical doctor, and I've worked with Doctors Without Borders in emergency centers all around the world, and I've seen these mistakes. I've seen a 22-year-old woman die in Pakistan because she was bleeding internally, and we made a mistake. We triaged her incorrectly. In South Africa, one million people are triaged every single year in the Western Cape alone. One in every four patients are incorrectly triaged, which means people are dying in our waiting rooms. Triage was broken, and we had to solve this problem. Together with a team of healthcare workers, designers, and developers, we formed the Open Medicine Project, and we created a mobile application that could effectively and efficiently triage patients. One that would go through the standard set of questions every single time. One that would calculate the mathematical score for you as you went through and added the vital signs. And one that would alert the healthcare worker to additional investigations that would have to be done. In 2013, we implemented this in one of the busiest emergency centers of the Western Cape, and in a small study, showed a staggering 88% improvement in triage completion, which means we started getting triage right for the first time, which means less patients were dying in our waiting rooms. We are now in the final negotiation stages of rolling this out across 25 facilities in South Africa. But then, as we moved forward, we started realizing something. For the first time, we had electronic data on triage, something that we've never had before. And we could start doing things that we've never been able to do before, like increasing diagnostic capability. So if you look at something simple like heart rate, systolic blood pressure, and you put them together, you could get something called a shock index, which is a sensitive clinical indicator to help doctors, for example, identify patients that have internal bleeding, but otherwise look well. Then we started looking at other data, like how many patients we were seeing, what days of the week they were coming in, and how sick they were based on their triage color. You could then start looking at li your limited resources and how best to effectively utilize those resources. And then picture this. Picture the triage application at the beginning of every emergency center across the continent, pooling simple data into a dashboard. You could then start seeing, for instance, children under five in Central African Republic that have presented with watery diarrhea. You could come in from a specific clinic or village. You could start reacting, being proactive rather than reactive, and send out a team before hundreds of patients die. And then think about West Africa and everything that's been happening in West Africa at the moment. Simple triage data like high temperatures and bleeding coming from a specific clinic, village or town. And we could start seeing possibly alerting us to an outbreak before it happens.
like Ebola. You see, before we've never had this information. This was information that we took days, weeks, months to get to us, if it ever got to us at all. And we would never be able to be proactive. Now, for the first time, we could possibly do this. What I'm talking about is real-time epidemiology through the simple process of triage. Thank you very much. So just a couple of questions. I remember the old way, because I'm obsessed with like, biological thrillers and stuff. I love, I love that stuff. Um, that people would, you know, a couple months would go by, and all of a sudden, in the CDC's morbid morbidity and mortality report, there would be like cluster of deaths in Angola with vague information, and maybe somebody would go there. But they're always so far behind what was really going on. This is, you're basically saying that y you could easily have this data be coming in from all these clinics and then roll up and you have algorithms which will kind of flag and say, you know, temperature, like lots of kids with high temperature in this village, let's figure out what that is and go to attack it immediately. And potentially if you had an Ebola outbreak in the future, you could try to contain it a lot faster than it was. Is that right? Yeah, so instead of tracking deaths, you try and track symptoms which then allow you to react much faster. And even if you just phone the clinic and say, okay, what's happening? Is there a contaminated water source? Is there something going on in your community? And it allows us to be, again, like I said, proactive rather than reactive. So what's it gonna, you guys are implementing it at your clinic, you know, at your hospital now, and you're rolling it out regionally to, I think you said 25 or so plus mm. more. What's it gonna take to put that, let's just say Africa wide? wide? Uh, what kind of resources do you need to do that? Do you need money, technological expertise, cooperation of big organizations. I think it's better to do it with small organizations, probably. But, but not that I have bias. Uh, but no, seriously, what do you need to make this real? Well, we obviously need buy-in from the governments. Um, we also need buy-in from the smaller clinics. Uh, we would need the resources and funding to be able to roll it out. We've actually released the application for free uh, on the iPad store as well as the Google Android store. And now we are developing it further so that that free version you could then download straight to your clinic and start working. Um, and the technology itself is not expensive. It's all no. known stuff. It's databases, basically. Exactly. And by allowing, I mean, allowing health care workers to have the power to be able to impact patient care, I think that's the key element that we want to be able to do. To me, it's amazing that you started at improving tri triage, providing decision support to help really tired nurses not accidentally make a mistake. And then all of a sudden, you get to real-time public health and epidemiology. Uh, I'm pretty psyched about what you're doing. Thanks so much. Thank you.